Hallelujah. Uh, I really appreciate to be here this morning. Thank you, Pastor Warren, to give me possibilities to have time with the church together. It was really a wonderful blessing for my life last week. I really, you know, feel like in home. I really see, you know, the people take care of me, the friendly with me. The, they're my family, you know. I've been Pastor Warren two times in his home, and, you know, it's like my family. I feel very, very home. Thank you for Hallelujah. I would like to share with you a little bit about Poland. As I invite you to Poland, you need to know about Poland some things. Don't you? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, Poland is close to 40 million people nation. It's maybe same size like, like your state, like Mississippi, but uh, cloudy with the people, according here. And of course, what is the problem in Poland? In Poland, people, it's very religious, but they don't know God. The Catholics, they think they know God, but they're not. And as you already hear, we have only 670 churches, evangelical churches, I mean, all together, charismatic Baptists, including Adventists, all together, 670 churches in all nations. What is, you know, anyhow, it's much more developed, like, you know, uh, I say 25 years ago, we have only, you know, 130. It's developing, going quite, quite good, and we're really blessed on this. We're working hard for, to change this. We don't complain only about it. We believe. God is able, He is able to change our nation, to bring people to understand His will, His blessing, His life, what He gives for us, what He gives for Polish people, what He prepared for them. We believe this strongly and we're working on it very hard. If I say, you know, we're working very hard, I tell you, it's so many, so many possibilities, you know. And so many things happen around, you know, last 33 years I'm with Jesus. I'm born again, you know, in 75, 74 actually, sorry, 74. And from that time, you know, it's many, many things, different things going through Poland. And we're working, you know, hard to change our nation. You know, during communist time, we have very hard time and they're trying... I count last time, you know, the over 10 times trying to keep us out from our nation. I mean, me, my wife, and my kids, but we always come back. Because we know one thing, our call is for our nation. By grace of God, you know, God gives me grace to, to plant already, you know, many churches in Poland, connect them with different denominations, God gives me grace, you know, to bring a thousand people to Jesus in Poland. And this is really a blessing, I tell you. Among all blessings what we have, the great blessing is to bring people to his kingdom. Amen. To give them connection, strong connection with God. To give them, through Jesus, internal life. This is the best. This is the number one for us to do. For every one of us to do. Not for the pastors. Not for the, any ministry. For all people who believe Jesus. Because Jesus, he paid the price already. And he wants you, as you a man, a woman of God, he wants you to make involved to extend his kingdom. To bring people to him. And this is really, you know, great. It's, it's, you know, privilege to bring people to Jesus. And, you know, I just mentioned for you maybe a few things about in our life in Poland, when we married each other with my wife, we're already 30 years married. We have three kids, ourselves, three boys. The two of them in Bible school in Sweden. 
The youngest one, 24 years old, he studied architecture in Poland, but the all in ministry. The youngest one, he is already pastoring church. What we planned last autumn, as a blessing, have kids involved in the serving Lord. It is blessing. And you know, during our life in Poland, because the believing of God, the way what we believe in, what you believe in, is not accepted by all nations. They really, you know, separate you from community. They separate you from many things if you start to believe. In our life during, you know, our all marriage, up to this year, this is first year in my and my wife Sylvia marriage when we live alone in our house. The whole time with us live a bunch of people, sometimes 20, different kinds of people, young people who get born again and they keep them out from home. They separate them from family. But by grace of God, you know, I see the blessing on this kind of life too. You know, for example, one of, you know, Assemble of God in Poland, he is director for Bible College. His wife is ministering for all families in, in you know, in Assemble of God in Poland. They're born again in my home. They stay before get married in my home. They get married, they stay two years in my home. And we send them to Bible school, to university to study, you know. And then now, after years, the pastoring church, they plant a church in south of Poland. And after that, they leave the church to another people. And now, they move to worship. And they serve to all assemble of God in Poland and to all nations. You know, people, we invest for this people's life, our time, right. our money, our home. You know, they call us daddy. They call us, you know, mom, my wife for them, you know. They really, you know, it is a blessing to see how God use these people. People, what you invest your time, your life for them. This is a blessing. I remember, you know, the great blessing what I get, I remember when I visit his church first time. And he, I just passed through, through this city, going to Slovakia. And they say, Peter, can I visit you Friday? He said, yes, of course. And I know, you know, they don't have a meeting in Friday. In this case, I mean, he received me in his home. But when we come, he said, you know, you know what? We go to the church place. We go to the meeting place. I say, why? He says, it's some things for you. And he gathering all congregation together. And he stay before congregation and say to them very straight, if Max and Sylvia, my wife, they don't bring me and my wife to Jesus, we will not be born again, we will not be pastor in this church, and you all people not be born again, because they plant this church. You know what? This is the great honor. This is a blessing. And I would like today for you, encourage little you by the word of God. How do you know go to this kinds of blessings? How to work in your life, to give your life total to Jesus, not for your only benefit to get saved and go to heaven, but to, to benefit of his kingdom, yeah. to become his servant, yeah. to be extend kingdom of God, to be serve for kingdom of God in our life, and to see what is the price for for both sides, what you get and what you lose. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. You know, by grace of God, when I'm born again, when I'm born again, I'm raised up in atheist home. My father, during that time and before, from my childhood time, he is officer in the Polish army, political officer in this case. We don't have any chance, you know, to going to the churches, to going to church, to think, to talk about God. In this case, I raised up like atheist. 
But when I'm born again, I decide to serve God a more and much better like I serve the world before I get saved. You know, I have a big problem. I want to be officer in the army too. But I have a very big problem. I'm stuttering. You know stuttering? You don't say any one word proper. You don't speak proper. The people are laughing of you. You get really big problem in your life. And you know, and they always increase more. But you know, when I come to first meeting in worship, and I hear the preaching word of God, first time in my life, the preacher says, if you come to Jesus, if you come to me, says the Lord, he expressed this way. Your life be changed. Your life be changed. You be not only born again, you be healed. You be changed. You become back to your dream. And my dream is stop to stuttering. My dream is stop to smoking, stop to drinking. Because, you know, to kill your problem, you start to drink. When you drink, you increase your problem. And I sit and I think like this. God, if you really exist, if you real, like this man says, I want to know you. I want to come to you. Because if it's true what he says, I need you. And you know what? When they made altar call, you know, I made my decision. I know 100% percent the all things go away. You know, when I open my mouth, I don't stutter anymore. Nobody pray for me. Just decision. I don't know anything about the Word of God. I don't read before anyone sent this Word of God. I never before have a Bible in my hand. But the great God delivered me. He healed me. I have half package of cigarette in my, you know, packet, but I don't smoke more. I don't go to any program. Just go away from this problem. No more problem with alcohol. And I say, God, you really real. I go follow you. I be your servant. I won't know about you yes. all what is possible. And you know what? During the first eight months, I read two times Old Testament and six times New. Hello? I can't proper. Just hear it again. Two times Old Testament. What it mean, you know, and six times New, it means two times Old Bible and extra four times New Testament. During eight months, I challenge you people. I ask you how much you're reading daily. You know, I meet some places. I remember I got a shock in one church in States. In the United States, when I ask, how many of you read already all Bible? I say all, from the beginning to the end. In the biggest church like this, I think two sides. Only pastor. I get shocked. I get shocked. You know, I really like people honestly. They're honest. This is the great things. To be honest, be before God. But also very important things to change this. Yeah. I challenge you among all things what you're doing. All books, all movies, all activity, all weekly and weekend programs, and different programs, church programs, you know, your job programs, your school programs, your family programs. You need to have a program 
to reading your Bible. To know the Word of God. Because only the Word of God is able to change your life totally. You know, that time in Poland, we don't have reaching out meetings so often. They have one time a year. Praise God, I come to this meeting when they're reaching out first time and I'm born again. They don't have, you know, so often baptism in the water. They have first baptism two weeks after, you know, I'm born again. And they ask me if I want. I remember the first question in a, you know, in a podium. They call us front. I come front. And the pastor asked me, brother, are you have a Bible? I say, hey, sorry, man. I'm not your brother. I don't know anything about this stuff. And you know, they ask me, do you want to be baptized in the water? I say, for what? And I don't go. And they don't have, you know, next baptism in the water during a year. And I'm waiting. But when I'm reading and reading, I get desire to serve Jesus. And I get desire to go to Bible college. And I send application, but they reject because I'm not baptized in the water. I, want, I ask a few times to baptize in the water. They don't have it that time. They say, wait. When next get saved. But you know what? Same year, my youngest brother, I don't know this, you know, so much about because we don't have so close life. When I'm 14 years old, I go out from my home. And I'm born again when I'm 20 and a half, close to 21. In this case, you know, I don't know, he gets saved early, like, you know, eight months early before me, and he goes to Bible college already. And when he, he came after one year in Bible college, we start to talk. And, you know, I share with, with him my, you know, my burdens. I want to be baptized in the water. I want to go to Bible college, but I can. I, it's not possible. If I can't, you know, it's not possible for me because I'm not baptized in the water. And I talk with him and I explain to him. I explain to him. He is able to baptize me in the water. He say, no, it's for Buden. It's only for pastors and only for elders. I say, where is the written? I believe and you believe. And there's a water. And what we needed, we needed to go to this water. And we go and share this with the pastor. And the pastor says, okay, we baptize you. <laughs> Praise God. And I go to Bible college. By the way, you know, when you read the Bible, you know the word of God. When you know the word of God, uh, the door is open for you in the kingdom. And the people, you know, they're coming to you for, with the question. And they see, because, you know, the best what you have, you have wisdom from the God. After first year in Bible college, this is one, you know, very intensive course. We have, you know, close to 10 hours a day teaching, every day. They gathering us together, we live together, only for men. No woman, it's for women, it's forbidden to, you know, be in Bible school at that time in Poland. You know what? After the first year, my Bible college, the next year I'm a teacher in this Bible college. I have great, Possibilities with God. You know, it is a blessing to know the word of God. It is a blessing. But you know, they don't come in by dreaming. They don't come in only by talking about it. They don't come in about thinking about it. They don't come in to take decisions. They come in to fulfill it decision. When you decide to do and you do daily. And you do Daily, because through his word of God is the door. It is possibility for blessing your life abundantly. Amen. You know, in book of Joshua, of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8, it is very simple, you know, word for us. He says, 
that God says to him, to Joshua, his angels, they come to him, they, you know, show up, mighty God show up to Joshua. And he speak to him. Remember, stay in my word all time. Keep my word in your mouth. I tell you the one thing, keep in your mouth is not only looking, not only reading by your eyes, it's saying. It's saying word of God. Keeping in your mouth and thinking about the word of God day and night. You know what? I tell you, it's not easy, but it's possible. And when you do this and you act on my word, says the Lord, your life be a bundle blessing. Any step you make, I be with you. He encouraged Joshua to do this. I encourage you today. Stay in the word of God. For your own, for your family, for your church, from your world around you benefits. Because when you stay in the word of God, you'll be blessed. Your family be blessed. Your church be blessed. Yes. You're able to be blessing to the church. You're able to be blessing and more blessing for pastor. For people in the church. And you'll be blessing for all community, all people live around you. Because mighty God, He be with you. He watch your steps. He inspire you. He equip you. He might way use you among the people who is around you. Because he is faithful. Let me go this morning shortly for one direction. You know, mostly time, mostly time, the problem we have in our life, because you know, we not remember things what we should do. We get, we receiving teaching, we receiving, you know, encouragement, we receiving, you know, word from the people, from the book, from you know, different way. But when the trouble come, we not remember about it. It's very important to sometimes, you know, hold down a little bit and think a little bit more. And start act according, you know, knowledge what you already have. And we, if we don't have, we're able to receive it. You know, many times we, when the trouble comes, we forget. Today is so lot of trouble, you know. And people think about the worrying about, you know, uh, the climate problem. Don't you? You know what? We don't have more winter in Poland. When I'm tried, we have over two meters of snow. Last winters, we have only, you know, maybe 10 centimeters snow, you know, three inches, and maybe only, you know, for one week, two weeks, no more. No more winter. It's all changed, and people thinking about it, and people worry about it. People worry about job, people worry about family, people worry about health, people worry about everything. A believer people, the believing people, the believers. But you know, it's, I want to give you today four simple, you know, steps. Very simple. Number one, when you have a need, when you have a trouble, when you have a confusion, when you really, you know, in bad time, just look inside you. You know, many times we don't want to look inside you because most times we think about wrong things in our life. But I encourage you, look inside you in a good way. Think about one thing. 
Jesus lives in you. You know, in chapter 3, 2 Corinthians, verse 15, Paul says, Don't you know you are his holy temper? Look inside you, and you see Holy Ghost live in you. And you're able to change everything around your life, in your life. Because, you know, when you look inside and you see Jesus in your life, He is able to do everything. He is able to change everything. I remember, you know, one story from my life. It happens in 88. We're still under communist time. I have a very hard time, you know, because they point me I working for, like you know, for another nation's spies, and I must show up every week to police station. Every week, you know, they many times come to my home and made mess with everything, you know. They catch you in the street. They push fear in your life. And I remember one time they take me, you know, in, and the drive me, you know, during, I think, so maybe 20 few irons door, and they shut down behind you this door just to make fear of you. And now I know, but that time I don't know this. And they're trying to put fear on my life that says, you never go out from this room. You die today here. Your wife, we take it, we rob her. Your kids, we put the children home. If you don't deny what you do now. And you know what? You get fear. I say you honestly. I get fear. You know, I pee in my pants. You know, honestly I say you. I'm not here at that time. But I know one thing. I have a Jesus. And you know, when I think about uh, Jesus, you in my life. And you know, he, you know, he take the gun and the open to the fire, put to my head and say, now you die. And I almost gone. And they say, even if you kill me, even you take my home, my wife, my kids, you don't even touch Jesus in my life. And you know what happens? He gets shocked. He put the gun aside. He take a chair and destroyed his chair, destroyed his table, just to show his expression how he hid this. But you know what? When the God starts spoke to your life, and you said what he said to you, he don't stop. The next Word, what I say to this man, I say to him this word. You know what? Your wife yesterday leave you with your two kids. And she say she never come back. But when we pray today, she come back after tomorrow. Hallelujah. And you know what happens? He sit down. He get more shock. He start to cry because it's true. And he knows. Only God able to show me this. Because nobody knows about it. And he asked for forgiveness. He asked for prayer. We pray. And to make this story short, two days later, his wife come back. And a week later, he escaped from Poland. He resigned his working. He just give up and go out from Poland and come back when the communist fell down. You see how God is mighty. But you know what? To know this in the very you know, hard time, you need to know his words. Because according to my Bible, 
if we go to the Bible, according to my Bible, in, you know, chapter, chapter 14, Gospel of John, it says, the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, He come, when my father sent, Jesus says, He come and reminds you what I spoke to you already. You know what? You need to understand one thing. God have mercy. He is full of love of our life. But He have a law to what He don't able to cross. If you never hear what, Holy, what Jesus spoke to your life from His Word, because He is the Word. His Word is Him. He is the Word. When you read the Bible, you hear Jesus daily. And when the trouble come and you need the help, we have Holy Ghost. And He is able to help you. He is able to remind you but what you already hear it before. It cost you to read the Bible, to know His Word. For your life. And when you have trouble, you look in and you see Jesus in your life. With Him, you see possibilities. The next step you needed to look behind. You know, the many times we think like this don't look behind. Because, you know, Sometimes not good things, sometimes good, but maybe we respect better. But you know what? Look behind you what Jesus already did for your life. Look behind and see, he is mighty. He did this, this, and this miracle in my life. When he knows this, you get encouraged. And you start to understand more and more. And you get more and more. He see what he's already do, and you easy, more easy to believe what he's able doing more in your life. This step is very important. Look behind. And next step. Look up. Lift up your eye. You know, many times. We would like to lift up our eyes to see what is the happens right now in the air. But I encourage you, I encourage you to look up, lift up your eyes and see Jesus. You know, when Stephen, we see this in Acts, Chapter 8, when Stephen is astonished. You know, he has a very hard time. He has much more hard time like I have. Much more, I tell you. Because the gun don't shot. He don't even beat me. He just put fear on me. But Stephen, he received real attack. He received stones. But he lift up his eyes. And he see Jesus. He see open heaven. And when he did this, he received power from the Holy Ghost. Not only to, you know, pass through these things. Not only, you know, <clears throat> to be closer with Jesus, but also... Be strong enough to pray for these people who astonish him. You know, actually, we don't think so much about it, but you know what? The Paul beginning coming to Jesus in, in this place. Because he is in this place. He keeps the clothes for the people. When Stephen is astonished, we read this in the Acts. And Paul mentioned this before. And he prayed for Paul. He said, Father, don't condemn these things. Love them. 
And what Paul received in the way to Damascus? He received Jesus' love. He received Jesus' love. Because Stephen prayed. Why Stephen prayed? Because he lifted up his eyes. And he see Jesus. He see his expression, love, for him and for the people. Because he paid already price in the cross. The last point, number four, look forward. You know, many times when we have a problem, when we, you know, have struggles, we so much concentrate about what we have right now. I encourage you, look forward. Look some things what is preparing for you. Look for this. But to see what is preparing for you, you again needed to know the word of God. Because you know what? Many people have different things. Many people dreams, different people dream is fulfilled. But you know what? You needed to fulfill your dream. You needed to fulfill it your desire according to the word of God. And the word of God, it's for your individual life, is a different like for me and for many other people. It's just for you. But to see forward what is preparing for you, what God has for you. You needed to know his word. If you know his word, you see it. You know, by the way, I remember, you know, I, I, I don't tell you all, you know, we have, uh, actually we have in Poland first Bible school in, in, uh, for all people, for, you know, women and men together. And I remember we have one student, he attended three years our Bible school. The last year, practiced here too. And I remember we have, you know, that, that time we extend our ministry. We serve, for example, in 28 prisons. 28 prisons a month. We serve. We visit. We send people, you know, too. We have homeless ministry. We have, you know, children ministry, street ministry, a lot of things, you know. And, you know, many times people, even if they're coming, you know, they, they don't see, you know, Result of. They don't see the internal result. They don't so much happy about the people in the church, I mean. Maybe like, I hope no one of you. But you know, I remember this student. He's now pastoring church. You know, this is blessing, I tell you. Have Bible students and they grow up, the pastoring church. Have people in your home, they grow up. They go to great ministry. It is a blessing. And he made a sketch, you know, for church people one day. And, you know, the sketch is going like this. He says, you know, oh, I see this kind of blessing. Oh, I see this result. I see this God's action. I see this healing. I see this. And some other people see it and say, but we don't see it. And the point of this, you know, sketch, he turned to them and said, are you pay your tie? It is meaning if you don't pay your tie, you see nothing. You know why? It's true. You know why? Because this is more easy things in the kingdom of God. This is very easy things. Just separate 10%. Nothing else. It's easy, you know. When you receive in the beginning, when you separate 10%, you don't even know about it much. If you want to do this in the end of week, maybe in the end of your pocket money, in the end of month, it's even mostly no possible to any people to do this in the end. But if you do this in the beginning, you don't recognize this even. You know, if you have in your cup with the water or maybe cock, you know, 10 cups of ice 
and you take it one out, you don't know even about it. You know, if you ask, you know, uh, waiter, bring me 10 cup of ice in my cup, they bring you, and they take, but they bring, give you only nine. You don't know about it even. It looks the same. I encourage you. It's very important, as you know, to be faithful in his word. To be faithful in his word. Because this is beginning, you know, this is small things. If you're not able to do small things, why are you able, why you should be able to do greater things? I have some and other things also, you know, to, sh to say you. Look like this. When you pay tithe, you know, we have this in Malachi book and so and so, you know this teaching, I'm sure you know. But you know what? The says in this place, when you do your side, I open for you my heavenly places, windows, and throw on you abundant blessing. What is the meaning? This way, God's God able to help you. You know, many times people come for help. Many times, you know, people come to the church because of help. But it's not bad. This is church duty to help people. It's good. But you know what? Many times people are coming and we try to help them. 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 We try to help them and never help them. Why? Many times because they're not, you know, they're not faithful with tithes. When they don't pay tithe, God not able to help, help them. Why we be able? We got not. But think about it like this. If you're not, you know, really faithful in this area, God is not able to bless you abundantly. Why Max might be, be able to bless you and God not? You understand what I mean? If you shut the door to God, it's no way to open for Pastor Warren. Because you have the key to this door. It is very important, you know, and the all is deposited in his word. And the coming when you're reading. When you're reading your word, it's coming to your life. It's changed your life. It's bless your life. And you get, you know, all this expression, what is inside. It's not dry word. The full of expression. And we receive it this. When you read it. I encourage you people this morning. To go for a conclusion. I encourage you strong. Remember. About your word of God. But to do this. You need to know one thing more. I hope. I hope. That all people here. It's really. A good people. And the good people have busy life. Don't you? You have busy life? Wake up in the morning, go to the job, set up kids, you know, take order in the house, come back home in a rush time, stay in the traffic. You have a lot of to do daily. Come back home, do some things, rest, visit, do extra things in the church, in, you know, different places. And... Go again, sleep, and you rush, rush, hurry, hurry. We don't have so much time extra, don't you? But you know what? To the read word of God, you need it to create for your life extra time. You need it to take a paper and make a list. Make a list and see what I do daily. And see how much I have time for the word of God. And see what is possible to take it away from my daily program. To place for this place. To replace reading Bible daily. Because only this way you really grow up. If you eat heavenly food, you be heavenly person. If you eat only, you know... 
the world food, what is easy today. You go out, before you come back home, you see a lot of advertising. If you turn radio on, you hear a lot. When you open TV, they're trying to show you and express you what they think, what the world is. You know, it's always the bombing you. They make your life busy. Any place you go, any place you look, they make your life busy. But you need it to take decisions. It is your responsibility to take this decision. To decide. I, a woman, man, I'm a woman who decide to stay in your world daily. You know what? If you eat only Sunday, and maybe Wednesday and some another day a week, maybe three meals a week, you'll be dry and you'll be dying. Don't you? It is like going to church, going to home group, and you know, some another maybe extra meeting during one week and receive the word of God. If it's only this, you'll be dry and you'll be dying. You need a daily food. Same like you feed your body, it's even much more important to feed your, you know, inside spirit man. It's more important. Because when you have heavenly food, you never, you never be out of daily food too. If you know heavenly word, if you close connect with Jesus, the old things be much more easy. I don't say you know you don't struggle. I do. I, I don't say you don't work hard. I don't say you don't have you know a problems in life. But you thrive. You go over. You be winner. Because you know word of God. Because God stay with you. Why? Because you stay with Him. You know what it happens. The Bible says when you come near the God. The God come closer to you. It's the only way. Think about less word, less God. More word of God, more God. It's always like this. We needed this. Okay. I go to finish today. I would like to pray with some of you if you want to be one who stay in prayer with me. No, it's okay, Pastor Warren. But for you know only one reason. If you really want to decide, I believe many of you are really already stay in the Word of God. I hope, I wish. But if some of you of you really understand today and know. I need it. Participate more in the word of God. Daily. I need it to reduce from my list and other things, take it away. I, I need it to decide. I need it to put to my schedule reading word of God. If you have this kind of needs, if you have this kind of decision, I'm willing to Stay in prayer with you. You know why? Because I believe when you're faithful in this area, you'll be strong and you'll be helpful for the church. You'll be helpful for Pastor Warren. You know, when you stay strong with the word of God, you don't wait, Pastor, come and ask you what to do in the church. The elders come and ask you what to do. When you stay with the word of God, you have desire to ask them, Pastor, what I do for you today. What I do for the church today. I know this for sure. Because I know my life. I know my life. My attitude is always help people. Help ministry. Do some things more. Be available more. Do everything that is possible to do. Don't be lazy. Be strong. It's important for us. I encourage you, if you want, if you have desire, I want, pray with you in this area, in this case. If you feel in your heart, 
you have in your mind, I want to be more fruit produced here. I to be more fruit produced here to help my pastor, to help my church extend, to bring people to Jesus. You want more people bringing to Jesus? You like it, this? You know, this is what we really, the internal things. We don't take it anything with us. We take it only people what we bring to Jesus, to heaven. Don't you? I encourage you. Okay. I would like to pray with some of you, if you want.